Well, we're on a bit of a mission today. We've got something like 10 miles and nine locks to do. We've already done a swing bridge, lift bridge, and uh, we need to get to Middlewich by Tuesday. Your turn. <laughs> <laughs> Which is actually gives us four days, but we're going to have a spring clean on the boat. So the boat builder is going to do blacking for us and a couple of little maintenance jobs, but we want to have a good clean up and a bit of a paint and a polish up just to so, show we're still um, looking after the boat after three years. It's traditional that you spend Easter weekend doing DIY, yeah, isn't it? Apparently so, so. This is what we're going to do. But we hit a bit of a snag at our first lock. <laughs> what happened? There's, a, there's a, a couple in senior years <laughs> who are on a, a holiday boat, lovely couple, and she's just absolutely scared stiff of panicking. locks, panicking, doesn't know what she's doing. She's puffing her inhaler because she's getting all stressed. <laughs> and uh, so we just helped her through this lock, but there are another, I think it's eight locks ahead of us yeah. today. So we're taking the opportunity to have a cup of coffee, have a chat to you and let them get ahead of us a bit. I think I might end up walking ahead when we get to the next lock and just helping her with the locks because you can't rush these things she's got to take her time but it's going to take us forever if we just wait for them to do it i've already walked through a swamp this morning it was literally over the top of my boots so muddy i feel like i've done a morning at the gym but i think it would be better if i just walk you can't because your ankle's a bit sore isn't it so you i've got yeah my ahead. ankles flared up again so i think i I actually think it's when we were walking the other day and it was slipping and sliding in the mud. Yeah. I think that's uh, set my ankle off again. So as I'm already muddy, I might as well, <laughs> we'll meet them at the next lock and see what happens. Well, hopefully they're through the next lock by the time we get there. No. Maybe not. <laughs> anyway, we've got coffee and hot cross buns because it's Good Friday. Um, so we're doing our traditional bit today, aren't we? We are. And then traditional decorating tomorrow. <laughs> you love it, don't you? So we've been we've been talking about um, this year's cruising and what we're planning to do and where we're going to go. Um, we're going to go to Crick Boat Show, but more about that next time. Uh, so after Crick Boat Show, we were thinking about going down the Stratford and Avon Canal, down the Avon River, Avon, maybe down to Gloucester or even Sharpness, is it, right at the very end? I don't know. I don't know. I think it's Gloucester Docks, isn't it? I don't know. Turn around, back up the River Severn to Worcester and um, back back to the middle part of, on the edge of Birmingham somewhere. So that'll do us for the whole summer, won't it? Yeah, but that's today's plan. The day before yesterday, we were going to go all the way down to do the Basingstoke Canal, yeah, down the Grand Union. And the way navigation. <laughs> I really want to do that, but maybe we'll, we'll do the Grand Union over winter coming up. Coming up, we've only just got out of winter. <laughs> and uh, do the Basingstoke and way navigation um, this time next year, maybe. So we'll see. I think but, the, the important thing is just to plan the little bit ahead of you. We know we're going south, so we know we've got to get to Middlewich. And then we know we're going to go down the Shropshire Union Canal, I think. Yep. So once we get near Crick, where we want to be by the boat show, or near Crick, uh, we'll make up our mind finally what cruising plans we're going to have for the summer, won't we? We will. We will indeed. And then we'll change them. <laughs> yeah, uh, <laughs> as is normal. So do you think it's uh, safe for us to proceed to this lock now? Do you think we've given them plenty of time to catch up? We'll go slowly. To get ahead of us, I mean. We're going to have a hot cross bun, drink our yeah. coffee, and then, um, yes, it, it's, we might not get as far as we planned today, but... No, hey never ho. mind. It's the way it goes. Bloody chiff chaff. <laughs> oh, joy. Here comes the rain. So we're coming up to the last bridge on the Llangothlin Canal. We're just going to stop, fill up with water, and then go down the four locks, which will take us to the junction, Hurlston. And that's it. Our little trip on the Llangothlin is over.
queue here at Hurlston Locks. There's uh, two boats going down already, one coming up who got stuck. So Canal River Trust have been out, we've been delayed for about an hour. But hey ho, that's the way it goes. And uh, about six or seven boats behind us now. But unfortunately that green boat over there has got blown across by the wind. And they're frantically trying to get themselves back to get through this lock. At this point I had to stop recording, the wind was too powerful for the microphone and also I was helping this chap, solo boater, come down the four locks. So uh, it was too busy, too much to do and had to leave Fran behind. Well. Might do, not quite sure yet, but yeah, might see you there. A couple of points there. Roger Wait. that, take care. Yeah, see you later. Thanks very much for that. Well, that's it, I rushed back. Caught up with Fran, she was coming down the second luck, and uh, I'm knackered, running up and down. Still, we're done now. And we're just going to moor up around the corner. We're not going to go as far as we expected today. So we're going to a place called Barbridge, where there might be suitable ales available. Goodbye, Langofflin Canal. And uh, hello back to the Shropshire Union. And Fran's going to pick me up just past these boats. Oh, that is so sad. A lovely little boat. Blimey, that was a day and a half. Two and a half hours to get down those last four locks at Hurlston Junction. In all weathers. Yeah, it threw everything <laughs> at us. I had to stop filming because I just couldn't, didn't have the time to film. Uh, the boat that got stuck down, we arrived at the tail end of that, so. Uh, they got stuck in the second lockdown, I think it was. Yeah, I think so. And they got themselves free after about an hour, apparently. And then uh, coming up, a boat got blown across the pound by wind. And so I had to uh, dive in there and help them. Well, not pull literally them across. dive not in, dive but in, no. get involved. <laughs> get involved and pull them across. And uh, then um, Paul on what's his boat's name? Uh, Come on, Think Fran. of it in a minute. Rockin' Robin. Yes. <laughs> Hello, Paul. He uh, was on his own. He's a solo boater. And uh, so I thought, well, I've got to help him down. You know, he's on his own. Uh, so I helped him down the four locks, worked all the locks for him, whilst Fran was waiting for me to get back at the top. And fortunately, uh, some viewers helped you down the first lock, didn't they? Yeah, it's, those locks are particularly difficult because the pounds are wide and it is really windy. Mm. So it's not easy to get down them. These viewers helped me down the first lock. And the last words that Rich and I had spoken before he went down to help Paul was, wait till your next lock is open before you leave the one behind. Because as soon as you're in the pound and the wind gets you, you can be yeah, blown and we've seen it. it so often yeah. and I'm really not strong enough I can do most things but I'm not strong enough to pole myself off against I the wind I wouldn't have been able to pole the um, boat off that, yeah. so I sat in the lock waiting for my next lock to be emptied and it was no problem there weren't that many boats coming up you know mm. I wasn't making anybody wait but there were a few people that thought they knew better than everybody else about how to work these locks and the rule as far as we're concerned is always you control your own lock. We, if we help people at locks, we never go in and start telling them what to do. You always ask, do you want help? What would you like us to do? Mm. And this this person intent, was intent on me leaving the lock so they could let water down the pounds. I don't even know why. And I did stand my ground yeah, and refused did. to leave the lock until the next one was ready for me. What he should have done was open the next lock for you so you could just cruise straight in without being worried about being blown across. Yeah. But, uh, it was Tempest were getting a little bit raised. He was a bit of a um, Captain Pugwash. He wanted to let everybody know how experienced he was but uh, he got was a short big, thrift from me I have to say. And there was a big queue by now. There's about 10 boats behind yeah. I think. There were double moored and everybody yeah. was waiting to come down. Oh. And what I wanted to do was, really wasn't holding anyone up because I was waiting for another boat to come out and it's all a bit complicated but anyway you were a hero because you helped it. everybody. We got through. We did it and uh, <laughs> 
Now we're off to the pub. We didn't go as far as we expected. We've uh, done about six miles, I think, today, and uh, enough's enough. So and um, also, Rockin' Robin mm. has offered us a drink, yeah, a beer, to say thank you. <laughs> so looking forward to that. A couple of beers and then uh, come back and just put our feet up. I, I think. think we'll be in bed by nine if we make it that <laughs> if far. We make it, <laughs> just, it's been a real tiring I'm day. I'm exhausted. I'm yeah. absolutely exhausted. I think pulling that boat off, that pound, was the the hardest thing really real strain but anyway done it here we are live to fight another day Good old David giving us a hand going through Chumley Lock again. You'll remember him helping us down the Wigan flight last autumn, as well as going through this lock on several occasions in the past. Roof has been scrubbed. The gunnel has been sanded, ready for its first coat of paint. Here we are in Church Minshaw, bank holiday weekend. I'm a little bit behind with my spring sewing, although having said that, I think this is the third or fourth batch of microgreens that I've grown in the kitchen. So what I did is I cut a milk carton, the top off of a milk carton, and um, to make it look pretty, because it's going to sit in the kitchen, I just put loads of yarn around it. Um, and I've got all these seeds that were left from last year when we had our mooring. And they're things that are too big to grow on the boat, really. So I've got Swiss chard, I've got kohlrabi, I've got spinach, carrots, radishes. And you can eat the leaves off of all of those before they've grown into a vegetable. So I'm just sowing a whole mixture coriander is going in now until this is covered cover it with a tiny little bit of compost and we just leave it on the side in the kitchen and within a week it's full it's like when you used to grow cress at school if ever you did that but it's really tasty because it tastes of coriander and carrot and we're just sprinkling them on salad look sorry to interrupt the first, first ducklings of the season <laughs> They're so quick, look at that. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, this is what we're doing. And in about a week's time, um, if we do some more filming, I'll show them. We just cut them onto salads, put them in sandwiches, and it's those seeds were no good to us anyway. And the other thing that I've been growing is pea shoots. Um, these were just a standard growing pea for the garden. But again, put them in there, and within a couple of weeks, we're just picking off these shoots and popping them. You could put them in... Um, risottos and all sorts of things. And salad or on, a, or on a boiled egg sandwich they're great yeah, as well, aren't yeah, they? Yeah, really taste of peas. So I'm also going to sow, I've got some mixed salad leaves which I'm now going to sow and keep under the pram cover at the back to grow into salads and we're just a little bit late and I still haven't got my tomato plants. Oh, so um, I know we're heading towards Nantwich and I know that there's um, somebody in the market that sells plants so fingers crossed. Do you think Archie wants some salad leaves? Do you want a pea shoot Archie? <laughs> <laughs> Remember last year on the uh, when we had the uh, mooring he discovered didn't he how to uh, pick peas off the yeah. plants He's pretty good at picking blackberries yeah. in the autumn. Once he's had the taste of one and he remembers. But yeah, last year we were we kept catching him picking the peas off of the plants and eating them. He's not sure about that though. Look, everything else goes down in about a nanosecond. He's just <laughs> savouring the flavour. Do you think? <laughs> So after a paint stop, we continue our journey along the Middlewich branch of the Shropshire Union Canal. Just about eight miles to go and four locks.
Well, we ended up having an evening cruise, which is absolutely wonderful. The day has been superb today. And uh, just done three miles since painting the side of the boat. And uh, just going through this last lock before we moor up. This is what he's getting worked up about. A cormorant drying its wings on the opposite bank. Well, it's bank holiday Monday and it's good old fashioned bank holiday weather. It's peeing down. But we're in full spruce up mode here on Laura Maisie. We've uh, been painting the outside of the boat as you've seen. Fran at the moment is in the kitchen. She's rubbing down the work surfaces and re-oiling them with Danish oil. I'm working on my bingo wings. Good job, Fran. <laughs> I'm painting the uh, gutters here in the back deck. And I'm also gonna paint these surfaces with matte black paint because they get scratched so easily. And it's so easy just to touch up with this rattle paint that we use, the, um, use for the gunnels on the side of the boat. So it's the first time I've ever done this on this boat. And as you look around, you start clearing up, you find things that need doing, and one job leads to another. Like these corner scratches here, that's been caused by having the bite there. So um, yeah, little bits to be done here and there, but she's still looking good. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and um, so it's Monday today and tomorrow we're going into the boat yard at Elton Moss where they're going to take Laura Maisie out of the water and paint her bottom black. Uh, so that will be that for another two years. Now time flies, eh? But so here goes. I went on a boat painting course when we had Constanza. God, it could be five years or so ago. Um, I can't remember the guy's name now. Phil, Phil. Anyway, he's a well, really famous boat painter. But he said, don't forget to stir the paint. And then when you think you've stirred it enough, stir it some more. And then when you think you've stirred it enough, stir it some more. So I've been stirring this for a while because the <laughs> pigment just falls to the bottom and it all sits on top. So I do think I've done that now. So here goes for the painting on a bank holiday Monday. Is there any reward to this, Fran, other than the boat looking good? Uh, the boat looking good. <laughs> <laughs> You spent all winter just looking at the boat, thinking, oh, that's got to be done. Oh, this has got to be done. And the more and more you put it off and the more and more you think about it, the bigger the job it becomes. But I've really enjoyed just sitting in the engine room here and cleaning this out and rubbing it down and uh, getting ready to paint. So it's been uh, quite therapeutic. Well, here we are at Journey's End. Just got to get through this lock, through the bridge on the other side, across the junction and into Alton Moss's boatyard where Laura Maisie will have her bottom blacked while Fran and I and the dogs stay in a hotel for a couple of nights. Oh, happy memories of Fran reversing down this arm four years ago just to get a pump out and we ended up buying a boat. How time flies.
Thanks so much to Elton Moss Boat Builders for doing an excellent job on the blacking and the few other jobs that we got them to do for us. And also thanks to Aidan for capturing footage of the boat going back in the water. We'll be catching up with them all again at Creek Boat Show at the end of May. If you enjoy our content, then you might like to consider becoming a member through Patreon or YouTube. You get our videos early and ad-free, plus a regular blog from Fran. Also, you get that fuzzy feeling knowing you're doing something of national importance by supporting us. See you next time, and thanks for watching. <laughs>